we interrupt this adorable cat video for an amazing animated film on the debt and the deficit! I know what you're thinking. Boring! But everything is fun when it's a cartoon. Whoa! See what I mean? Uh-oh. Don't worry, I'm fine. So don't click back to that cat video. Don't do it. Come on, let's go. 1789, the federal government was formed. That was also the first year that the federal government ran a deficit. That is, it spent more money than it took in in taxes. And borrowed to cover the hole. And for the next 220 something years, the federal government carried a debt. Except for 1835 and 36, baby. Best president ever. A lot of people use the terms federal deficit and federal debt as if they meant the same thing, but they don't. The deficit is the amount of money the government needs to borrow in one year. The debt is the total amount of money that the government owes from all of the years of borrowing combined. Most of this money is borrowed from investors, who the government promises to pay back with interest. Some people think debt is scary, sinister, even immoral. But people take out loans to do all kinds of important things, like go to college, which can be a great investment. <laughs> Assuming you actually study. Over the past few years, America has been climbing out of a recession. And there's a debate among smart people about whether deficit spending is the best plan for helping the economy recover. One side says, Government spending can jumpstart the economy, like how spending during World War II helped end the Great Depression. But the other side disagrees. Sure, it's fun to spend a lot today, but we'll pay for it in the long run. But whoever is right about short-term deficit spending, pretty much all economists agree that in the long term, if nothing changes, the growing debt will become a problem. It's true. But only in the long term. The deficit in 2014 is around $500 billion. And the total debt to the public is around 12.6 trillion. This number does not include money the federal government has borrowed from itself, which would bring the total to 17 trillion. Some restrictions may apply. Now that's a lot of money. Just $1 trillion would cover a football field with $100 bills 10 feet deep. This is our house. And $12.6 trillion would look like this. But economists agree, the real question isn't so much how big the debt is in dollars, but rather how big it is compared with the total economy, or GDP. Which is 17 trillion dollars. The reason for that is pretty simple. To a person earning minimum wage, having a $100,000 debt, say a home mortgage, would be really scary. But to someone making a million dollars a year, a $100,000 debt isn't so bad. <laughs> Same goes for countries. A large economy can support more debt than a small one. So, when people who know what they're talking about assess the debt and deficit, they talk about it as a percent of GDP. The deficit and debt have never been so high in dollars, but as a percent of GDP, it's been worse. At the end of World War II, the annual debt was significantly higher than today. And in the past five years, the annual deficit has decreased each year. So that means there's nothing to worry about. Woohoo! But that doesn't mean there's nothing to worry about. Oh, man! The nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office projects that if our policies stay the same, the debt will increase in the decades ahead to unsustainable levels. While there are a lot of expensive items in the budget, the CBO says there are three areas set to grow most dramatically. The number of older Americans is increasing, which will put a strain on Social Security in the future. Healthcare has gotten more expensive throughout the country, increasing the cost of programs like Medicare and Medicaid. And interest payments on the debt are likely to increase as the size of the debt grows. And if interest rates, which are extremely low right now, go up, it would get even worse. Whether you're conservative or liberal, whatever you want the government to do, fund schools or military, or deal with an unexpected crisis, all of it would become more difficult. So, what do we do? Don't look at my check, Sonny! Who are my healthcare? Don't even think about it. 
You see the problem. Americans want their services, and they also want low taxes. But it's simple math. Managing the debt in the long term is eventually going to require some combination of raising revenues, cutting spending, and growing the economy as a whole. Huh, makes sense to me! Okay, you can go back to the cat video now. <laughs> <laughs>